الله أكبر والله أكبر الله أكبر والله أكبر الله أكبر والله أكبر الله أكبر والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر ما فرح الصائم بفطره وابتشر الله أكبر ما قام مصلي وكبر الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله وبحمده بكرة وأصيلا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله حبيبه خليله أكمل الله به دين وختم به النبيين الله صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وقال سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with this month of Ramadan and there was a fruit, a benefit to get from this month and that was taqwa. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, one of the great scholars of the past, he said about the ones who are fasting, السائمون على طبقتين The people that are fasting are of two categories, two degrees. أحدهما one من ترك تعامه وشرابه وشهوته لله سبحانه وتعالى The one that gives up their eating and their drinking and their desires for the sake of Allah as we all did in the month of Ramadan Ibn Rajab says that that, that person who fasts like this he will return back to Allah and he will find in Jannah the reward of what he did and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, never lets the good deed go to waste never is there is there good deeds caused to be lost, their reward will for sure be with Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us as the Prophet sallallahu told us in the hadith reported by Imam Ahmad that Allah will always repay the good deed for the one who does it for his sake. But he continues and he says that there is a second type, a second type of fasting person. And this is the one that not just in Ramadan, not just in Ramadan, but regularly you will see them that they will protect their mind, the head and what it contains. And this is actually based, what Ibn Rajab is saying, based on a hadith that is reported by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, by Tirmidhi is a Hassan hadith, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the Sahaba, Istahiru min Allah haqq al haya Be shy from Allah, as is the right that you are shy from Allah. The Sahaba radiyallahu said, Ya Nabi Allah, O Messenger of Allah, Inna nastahi, walhamdulillah. We are shy from Allah, and thanks is to Allah. They took it as a very literal meaning. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told them, Laysa dhaka. It is not that. Walakinna, but, Al-istahi min Allah, haqq al haya the real one who is shy from Allah, as is the right of doing so. أن تحفظ رأس وما وعى وتحفى بتن وما حوى وتذكر الموت والبلاء ومن أراد الآخرة ترك زينة الدنيا ومن فعل ذلك فقد استحي من الله حق الحياة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم told him pay attention this is what we should have taken out from the month of Ramadan to be from this tabaqa from this degree of fasting which is that we have shame in front of Allah from sinning. When you are in front of Allah, Allah sees you everywhere. So you protect your head and what it contains. What does that mean? Your eyes and what you look at, your ears and what you listen to, your mind and what you think, your, your tongue and what you say. This is the fasting that should go on all year. That before you say something, you think, is this something Allah will be pleased with? Is it backbiting? Is it lying? Is it kufr? Is it against the deen? No. If it is, hold your tongue. Fast from saying that. When you look at things, when you hear about things, when you think about things, you, you make imsak, you stay away from that which Allah has made haram. And your button, your stomach and what's around it. You don't eat haram. 
You don't cheat, you don't lie, you don't get, you don't drink haram. How can we go through a month of Ramadan and then somebody goes to a bar, somebody drinks a sip of that khamar that Allah has made haram? Do you think Allah does not see you the rest of the year? How can we have that shameless attitude in front of Allah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa continues for the one who has haya from Allah and makes the, the, the tazkirah, remembers death. Well, bala. What is bala? Death, al maut. You know it's coming. Prepare for it. Al bala is when you are in the grave and you degrade, you rot. This body that you're so proud of, that you work out and you look at yourself and you be amazed about yourself and this this beauty that you are that you have this kibber with. What will happen to it in the grave? Remember that. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued to tell us. Then man arada al akhirah, whoever makes an intention for the year after, tarak zinat al dunya, then they should leave the adornment, the beauties, the pleasures, the foolishness that we put ourselves in this dunya. Don't worry about flexing on people. Don't worry about showing off. Don't worry about just enjoying life. Make your niya. Make your intention that Allah gives you the eternal, lasting peace. And pleasure in Al-Jannah. My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, today is the day of Eid, a day of happiness, a day of joy. We want everybody to be happy today. We want people to greet each other and their families and, and be happy, show that joy. This is the day you should celebrate, not those innovated festivals that we see of shirk of Christmas and Halloween and, and birthdays and all those things that Allah has made haram on us. No, this is the day, the Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, these ayam, these days Allah chose to be days of happiness. It's haram to fast today. Today is a day that you eat and you celebrate and you enjoy. But as we are enjoying, as we are having fun, we should not forget about our brothers and sisters in Islam around the world. What happened to us as an ummah, that the ikhwan, al-Qirda, wal khanazir the ikhwan of monkeys and pigs are, are humiliating us, are attacking our masajid, are harming our women and children. What happened to us as an ummah? How can we forget our brothers and sisters in China, in the Uyghur provinces, Xiang and so on, where, where they are being forced to eat in the daytime in Ramadan, where they are being put into concentration camps and imagine their Eid. What is their Eid? Are they not our brothers and sisters in Islam? You will ask me, what can we do? Why talk about something when you're not ready to do anything about it? And I will answer that taking placards and walking and begging the kuffar is not the way of the Sahaba. They didn't go to Faras and Rome and, and beg them. No, I will remind myself and you that we need to be have a people of strength, a people of quwa, a people of Iman. The strength has to come with our Yaqeen, our Tawakkul, our belief and, and reliance upon Allah. Rabbi ibn Amir radiallahu anhu was a Sahabi. Allahu Akbar, this Sahabi. He went to the Persians, the army of Faras, the army of Rustum, the army of Kaiser. Here, they stood strong. Weaponry, superpower of the time. Rabbi ibn Amir was skinny, weak, didn't have armor, didn't have even a sheath for his sword. Rustam called them when he went riding. They told him, Get off your, your ride. He said, No, I didn't come here on my own. You called me. I will go as I wish. Izza. He didn't go and beg. He went with Izza. Why? What power did they have behind him that we don't have today? We don't have Allah. What nuclear power did they have? What did they have? No, Iman. Physically he was weak. He saw the, the Persian army in armor and weaponry, big, physically bigger than him, stronger than him, better organized. He laughed. He said they put armor on dead bodies. Rasulullah sallallahu told us the one who remembers Allah is like the one who is alive. And the one who does not remember Allah is like the one who is dead. They put armor on dead bodies. They think we're afraid of this. He went to Rustam with honor. Rustam told him, sit. He said, no, I will sit next to you. I will not sit underneath. Not like our leadership today. He went. 
And Rustam told him, what do you want from us? He said, we don't want anything from you. We don't want anything from you. We came to give you something. Rustam said, what can you give us? He said, we have come to take mankind out of the worship of the, of the creation to the worship of the Khalik, of the Creator. We've taken mankind to take mankind out of the oppression of other religions into the peace of Islam. He didn't just say, you're good and we're good. No, we came to give that da'wah towards Tawheed. He said, we came to take mankind out of the tightness of this dunya into the vastness of the akhirah. And Allah made it upon the weak hands of those, of those Bedouins, of those desert dwellers that went to the tarbiyah, to the training program of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that Allah gave victories to those lands and those armies by the will of Allah. Today, if we want that, it's not going to come from you going to the ball on the weekend and then, then protesting on the daytime, doing a dabka dance and thinking this is going to bring victory for Allah. La wallah! You have to correct your aqeedah. You have to correct your understanding of Tawheed, of Islam, of the Quran, was Sunnah. You have to obey the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You have to gain knowledge and then act in according to that knowledge. You have to bring that connection with Allah. You have to bring that iman and yaqeen. So when you speak, you speak with izzah, not with Allah, wallahi, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same and the Nusra is there and we are responsible for this time that we are, we will be held accountable in front of Allah. So I make this niyyah for myself and I tell my brothers and sisters from this day of Eid to make tark of ma'asi, to leave that which is sinful and to do our best to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bring that iman so that next time we speak as an ummah, we speak as one ummah, we're united upon the kitab was sunnah and we speak with izzah, Allahumma taqabbal minna wa minkum.